courts of various jurisdictions here present. Your Excellency, as that gallant and eminent justice at the Supreme Court bench, who invaluably held sway in the discharge of his judicial functions. As second in command in the hierarchy of the Supreme Court, my Lord, the Honorable Justice Datijo Muhammad skillfully aided and supported me factually in every sphere of administration. He is a specimen of hard work, industry, discipline, and I moral rectitude. His Lordship willingly offered every support and encouragement that any leader will always wish to enjoy from a deputy to effectively meander the often storming coast of court administration. From his Lordship's simple four-page CV, my Lord Justice Datijo has frankly proved to all of us that great men who have accomplished so much in life hardly talk or write much about themselves as their great works are commonplace and could effectively speak volume about them, both now and in the future. Through to that conviction, one could conveniently write a masterpiece of 1,000 pages on the highly cerebral and enigmatic personality called Musa Datijo Muhammad, CFR, GSC, who is at the center of today's ceremony being the latest birthday boy in town. So, by this event heralding His Lordship's 78th birthday anniversary, the time has come to cease from functioning as a judicial officer. Immediately after this court session, a new page will ultimately open in the life of His Lordship, which His Lordship and an entirely different set of people that destiny had already assembled along the part of the second phase of his life, we begin to write on. Change has a considerable psychological impact on the human mind. To the fearful, it is threatening because it means that things may get worse. To the hopeful, it, encour it is encouraging because things may get better. And to the confident, it is inspiring because of the challenge that exists to make things better. I am sure that his lordship belongs to the latter group because he believes fervently that success in life is not a result of spontaneous combustion, as he had already initiated the desire spark through hard work and perseverance. As I look closely at his lordship, I could see clearly that he has adequately laid out his plans for the future and is already on the move to face the future just the way, the same way the future faces him from this moment on. Judge Bernard Shaw, that Irish playwright, had said, and I quote, life is a, like a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving." Unquote. His Lordship's retirement today has further depleted our ranks and opened a yearning gap that will hardly be filled. With him, leaving us today after the retirement of Honorable Justice Adamu Amina Augi a few weeks ago, we are now left with just 10 justices on the Supreme Court bench been the lowest we have ever had in contemporary history of the court. However, I can confidently assure all the litigant public that efforts are in top gear to get on board a sizable number of justices to boost our rank and complement the tremendous effort we have been investing in the business of the court. His Lordship's charismatic disposition and unflinching commitment to, cause, to the cause he believes in, have literally conjured an alluring aura around him. In life, there is time for everything. 
The time has come now for his lordship to take a final break and have a well-deserved rest in the comfort, comfort of his private life. We all rejoice with his lordship on this special occasion that has been long anticipated, especially as the almighty God has considered him worthy to enjoy good health and sound mind. Surely, his eloquent voice of remarkable judicial activism that had for several years rented the air waves of various courtrooms across the country will continuously resonate and admonish generations yet unborn. That great playwright, William Shakespeare, had said in his epic play, Hamlet, that, quote, the play is the thing wherein I will catch the conscience of the Lord. Going through the pages of my Lord's judgments, which are replete in different law reports and national newspapers of record, you will certainly be confined to the conclusion that his lordship has not only captured the conscience of the king, but has also successfully hypnotized every reader of the judgment as he swiftly navigates the webs and tapestry of the law in registering his fact-based reasoning. It is a feat worth celebrating and applauding. His lordship is a far ray of hope and beacon of strength to both the judicial officers and legal practitioners across the continent of Africa and even beyond. Like they always say, no one gets lost in the pursuit of his or her dreams. My Lord has evidently given his childhood dream a hot chase and has conquered all the obstacles in his way to the pinnacle of his career. Thus, today, he's bowing out, not just as a distinguished justice of the Apex Court in the land of Nigeria, but also as the number two most senior judicial officer on the soil of the most populous black nation in the world. His lordship is indeed a jewel of inestimable worth and an icon worthy of celebration and adulation. His lordship is one judicial officer that could be blunt even to a fault and is never known to be afraid to say things the way they are and also never shies away from calling his paid by its very name, irrespective of whose horse is God. Through his mind and conduct, his lordship has succeeded in erecting an edifice of hope and optimism in the minds of his teeming admirers and even generations yet unborn who will be privileged to access and behold his great works in the judicial landscape that have already been well documented and displayed conspicuously in the shelves of various libraries across the world. Honorable Justice Musa Datiju Mohammed was until this very auspicious moment the Deputy Chairman of the National Judicial Council, NJC. He was the Chairman of the NJC Interview Committee, the Vice Chairman of Legal Practitioner Privileges Committee, LPPC, the Deputy Chairman, Board of Governors of the National Judicial Institute, NJI, and the Chairman, Education Committee of the NJI, among others. His Lordship took the oath of office as Justice of the Supreme Court on Tuesday, the 10th July 2012. His Lordship's accession to the Court of Appeal was more of a reward for hard work, inherent passion for his chosen profession, dedication to duty, and above all, a resolute application of the law in his true letters and words to all cases that came to him. His Lordship had a well-deserved elevation to the Court of Appeal on the 21st of November, 1998, and served at different divisions of the court. He was the presiding justice of the Kano Division and Potako Divisions, respectively. His Lordship was appointed to the Niger State Judiciary as a judge of the State High Court in July 1989, after serving in various capacities in the State Judiciary, ranging from Magistrate Grade 2 to Chief Registrar between 1978 and 1986. My Lord, who hails from Chanchaga, local government area of Niger State, was said 
to have been born on Tuesday, the 27th of October, 1953, in Mina. His Lordship attended Native Primary School, Mina, from 1960 to 1966 for his first school living certificate. Between 1967 and 71, he was at Sheikh Saba College, which is now Sadawne Memorial Secondary School, Kaduna, from where he proceeded to Abdullah Bayeru College, Kano, for a pre-degree program which aided his immediate admission into the Faculty of Law at the Amadubelo University, Zaria, where his lordship bagged a degree in law in 1977. He was called to the Nigerian Bar on the 2nd of July, 1977. Not satisfied with only a first degree in law, His Lordship Honorable Justice Musa Datijo Mohammed sought admission at the Warwick University in 1982 for an LLM degree, which he obtained in 1983. My Lord, the Honorable Justice Musa Datijo lost fishing at his leisure, and I believe his Lordship will now have much time to do the same on a large scale at least to grow the nation's economy. His Lordship has penchant for watching Hausa films and listening to Hausa music, which epitomizes his undying passion for culture and tradition, being a direct reflection of the grassroots man that he is. His Lordship was President Magistrate Court of Magistrate Association of Nigeria from 1985 to 1986 a member of the Constituent Assembly in 1988 to 1989. The inherent passion and reputation for hard work and industry were seamlessly deployed by my Lord to his judicial practice by attaching noticeable seriousness and seal to his work all through the 47 years' service to his fatherland. My Lord has traversed different countries of the world and presented scholarly papers at different conferences and workshops bothering on the development of the justice sector to further wear the adjudicatory proficiency of his audience. In recognition of his sterling feat in the judiciary, the federal government of Nigeria thought it expedient to confer the prestigious national honor of the commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, CFR, on his lordship in 2022. My Lord's robust contribution to the development of our jurisprudence are invaluable and riveting. 